Hi, everyone. My name is Laurel Tamayo. I'm the climate impact producer at Yeah Impact and the co-producer of this workshop. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a Southeast Asian woman with long black hair, wearing a maroon top and gold leaf earrings. I currently reside on Tongva land. I'm so honored to introduce our talented speakers for today, Carmiel Banaski and Anna Jane Joyner. Carmiel Banaski is an award-winning short story writer and novelist who recently made the leap into television, staffing on the Amazon series, Undone. She is the author of the novel, The Suicide of Claire Bishop, and her writing has appeared in The Guardian, LA Review of Books, Glimmer Train, The Rumpus, NPR, and other places. Currently, she is adapting a feminist cli-fi fantasy novel, Frost and Thorn, and writing for a cli-fi podcast. Carmiel has also taught climate writing workshops along the LA River, spent time on a ship in the Arctic studying and writing about the climate crisis, and she once tried and failed to open a Planned Parenthood in Mississippi. Anna Jane Joyner has 15 years of experience in climate communications and is passionate about crafting stories and strategies that inspire new and non-traditional audiences to take action on climate. An enthusiast for audience analysis, compelling creative and storytelling, Anna Jane has inspired evangelicals, Catholics, pro progressive faith communities, millennial ex-evangelicals, yogis, musicians, rural communities in the Deep South, NASCAR fans, and most recently, Hollywood writers and producers to act on climate. Her work has been featured by Rolling Stone, Grist, Glamour, MTV, The Associated Press, The New York Times, and more. She is the founder of The Good Energy Project, a nonprofit creative consultancy that's unlocking the power of TV and film to inspire courage in the face of climate change. It supports TV and film writers to weave climate themes into the fabric of popular shows and new films. Take it away, Anna Jane and Carmiel. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. And we're very excited to write with you today. And um, I'm zooming in from LA uh, where we have our orange skies as a reminder of why we're all here this weekend. And I'm coming to you from the Gulf Coast of Alabama where my family has lived for over a century. Um, so in addition to this being a professional passion, it's also deeply personal to me because we are very much on the front, um, front lines of climate change. We actually had a really bad hurricane hit us this time last year, um, and we had to evacuate in the middle of the night, and it was super terrifying. We lost 24 trees on our property, but just e even every day, um, seeing how much sea level rise we've had, how hot the Gulf waters are, and how it's only going to get worse over time. Um, so yeah, this is this is not only my professional passion, but very much, um, you know, my my personal passion as well. Uh, my other big passion in life is storytelling. And I noticed kind of as a climate activist earlier in my career, that this was something that the climate movement um, struggled with. And I think that's because we have amazing scientists and policymakers and campaigners and organizers but we don't have a lot of artists and storytellers. Um, so we have, you know, we have all this facts and data and science, which is amazing, but it hasn't solved the problem by itself. Um, so what we don't have is the political will and the public imagination. We don't have the stories that really pull at our heartstrings. And that's, um, that's why stories are so important and why there's really no winning this fight without stories. I've been thinking a lot about what kinds of stories um, you know, we need to move forward on climate. Um, and I think we need stories to help us make meaning from all of this, um, stories to help us grapple with this scary new reality and the fear and grief and despair that can come up with it. Stories that help us see that we're not alone and we're not going crazy. Um, stories that let us feel, find beauty and joy and purpose in the midst of more and more chaos and suffering and heartbreak. Stories that help us see a path forward to a better future. Stories that acknowledge and wrestle with the injustices and intersections of the climate crisis. Stories that show righteous rage at how like truly insane the situation is. Um, and I've been thinking about this one a lot, stories that help us befriend uncertainty um, and kind of get more comfortable with the idea of change. What we need is stories that give us courage. And I think, you know, stories have throughout human history been such a critical part that our, 
our minds and communities work to help us make meaning and move forward and grapple with really difficult um, parts of being alive. Um, and that's because they help us kind of process our emotions. And we need the psychological safety of, of not feeling crazy or alone um, to be able to move into a place of agency and action. So when people are able to process their emotions, they're more able to act. And that is certainly what we need right now. Yeah. So in this short workshop, we're going to give you three writing prompts to help you start thinking about writing about the climate. But what do we mean when we say a climate story? So for our purposes, what we mean is specifically stories that acknowledge the current climate crisis, the experiences of living in this world where things are getting hotter and weirder, specifically due to the burning of fossil fuels. <clears throat> and to us, that is basically every story. If your story takes place in this world or in the near future, it is a climate story. If your story has sky, it has climate change, right? So, but watching the majority of TV and films today, you wouldn't really know that our earth is in crisis and us with it. So the story world that we're seeing on screen no longer really depicts the world that we live in. So why is that? We've wondered. So what we found from talking with hundreds of writers is that most people associate climate stories with either lectures or apocalypse, with shame or doom, maybe a nature documentary. But it can be so much more. So our goal at Good Energy is to show those myriad of possibilities to help writers enter climate into their stories. <clears throat> As you all know, the climate crisis touches all of our lives and all of our intersections. It exacerbates divisions of class and race and age and gender. And that also means that there are endless opportunities to weave it into story of any genre. So that could mean from setting to plot, to character, to dialogue, we would love to see climate driven plots and um, characters driven by the crisis, but um, broad themes are also helpful, casual mentions or modeling climate friendly actions and behaviors on screen. So we wanna see more of all of it anywhere on that spectrum. The bottom line is that there is a consensus on climate change, but there is not a consensus on what a climate story is. And because there are so few climate stories on screen, this is totally new territory so that you as writers get to decide what that looks like. So we're not asking you to approach writing about climate with a political agenda. We want you to approach it like you would any story through craft, through character. But we also hope it's empowering to know that if you include climate, it will have an impact. And I think um, one of the things that's most important to remember um, as a writer is um, if it doesn't work for your story, for the world of your characters, um, it doesn't work for climate. So the most important thing to do is to, tell, to do what you do best, which is to tell a fucking great story. Uh, we're here We're here to help um, support with the rest. Um, we're working on a permanent open source playbook full of character inspirations, of activists and scientists and people on the front lines, um, all sorts of captivating, uh, fascinating characters to really show um, a glimpse of all the possibilities beyond just characters set in the apocalypse. We're also looking at uh, log lines for shows that are on and off air, kind of just fun illustrations to show that it's really possible to integrate climate into just about every storyline if you're writing a story that is taking place in on this earth, in this era, um, climate is impacting your characters and your story in some way, and it's just finding that and bringing it to life. So for the first prompt, we want to acknowledge that this shit is hard. How do you write about something so big? How do you even begin to approach the crisis, which is inherently unstorifiable? There's no clear beginning or middle, and there's certainly no foreseeable end. There's no single villain and no single hero. It spans time and space and species and nations. It is a hyper object and our brains aren't really wired to grasp the whole of it. 
So in the playbook that Anna Jane mentioned, we approached this all through character and plot and setting. And we're going to invite you to do that with a couple of prompts. But first, before we get to craft, before we even begin to touch that, I believe that we have to, that in order to write about this authentically, we have to let our hearts break open. We have to get nearer and investigate the emotions that none of us really want to feel. The depression and despair and anxiety, the shutdown. So today, because we're so much fun, we're gonna make you start with that, with a brief meditation and then a short free write. So please uh, make sure that you're in a comfortable position. And I'd like you all to close your eyes. And I wanna invite you to start wide. So imagine where the bodies of water around you are, around your city, the LA river or the ocean, wherever you're zooming in from, are they to your left or behind you? And I'd love for you to imagine all the people moving in and around the space and all the animals and the few wild spaces. And maybe you can even imagine this space through time, the people and the wildlife that have come and gone, the indigenous people whose land that we're on, the Tongva people here in what's now LA, a forest and floodplains along the LA River. And all of this is around you and you're right here, safe right now and part of this great story. So now I'd like you to bring your attention to your body. You've been thinking about the climate crisis all weekend, probably. So I'm curious, where in your body do you feel it the most? Does anything change in your body when you think about it? Maybe your shoulders tense, if you're like me, your jaw clicks. So when you think about it, don't try to relax that part of your body. We're just here to notice. Maybe you can even say to the part that's tense, okay, my shoulders are tight, that's okay. What happens if you let yourself hang out in that part of your body? What happens if you just feel it and don't try to change it? So now I invite you to open your eyes and hopefully, oh, we should have said this from the start. Hopefully you all have a pen and paper near you or open a note on your phone or on your computer. And I'd like you to write for just a few minutes what emotions came up. Was it anxiety or grief or overwhelm or nothing? That's okay too. You can write about where in your body that landed. And we'll, we'll tell you when there's a minute uh, left to write. Hi, I hope that that was a um, beautiful, illuminating experience for y'all. I did wanna call out um, Anya who shared a comment. It, it doesn't have to be, these prompts are more serious, but there are lots of ways to explore this through comedy and pretty much any genre. Um, so in the playbook, we go more in depth into the different kinds of genres and ways in, um, but here we are approaching it from a more kind of centered, serious tone, but there's, I mean, there's literally endless ways to write really compelling, captivating stories about climate. Um, awesome. Okay, so we are going to jump into the next part of the next prompt. Um, and this one is very near and dear to me because I think about a, a lot living on my the home that my my um, the the land that my family has been on for over a century. Um, but I want you to think of whatever home means to you. Maybe that's where you grew up. Maybe that's where you live now. Maybe it's a very special place. I actually lived in New Zealand for a year, so Anya, I was particularly resonated with your story. So oftentimes when I think of home, I actually do think of New Zealand. But most of the time I think of here on the Gulf Coast of Alabama. 
And I just want you to think about like what small or big changes have you noticed over um, over the course of your life? You know, do the flowers bloom at different times? Do you get more flash floods? Is there less snow or cold weather? Is there more erratic weather? Uh, whatever you've just kind of noticed uh, paying attention to climate when it comes to the context of your physical home. Um, and then I want you to imagine yourself as a character, like put yourself into the place of someone experiencing this. Um, and I want you to think about if you had to evacuate your home because there was a raging wildfire. Um, and this particular wildfire had never hit your community before. Um, it's come further in to, to the valley or wherever this is um, than it ever has before. So you don't have an evacuation plan, or at least not one that you've thought of about, about it a lot. You have to act really quickly. You have about 30 minutes to pack up um, and to get out. And I want you to think about what would you pack up and what would you miss? And just to give you a little insight, the reason I'm asking this is because I literally had to do this a year ago. Uh, we had to evacuate in the middle of the night. I had 30 minutes to pack up. Um, the storm wasn't supposed to hit us. It turned at the last minute. Um, so I had to think, oh, and it was very interesting to me to think about like, what do I value? Like, what are the things in my home that I most value that I, that I took with me? And what about my home, you know, facing the possibility of losing it, would I most miss? So put yourself in the position of a character facing that and see what would you take with you and what would you miss when you're, you're kind of waiting to see if your home made it or not. I think um, after talking to a bunch of writers and um, just you know really exploring climate storytelling for a few years now, um, I, I think the easiest way in is through character. Like that's the easiest way to see how climate would be impacting a story. Um, and that's one of the ways to kind of explore that is by making yourself the character and thinking about how, uh, what emotions come up for me? How does this show up in my life? What, what do I see the physical impacts on of climate and where I live or where I grew up or in places that I love? Um, what are the, you know, the relationships? How does it impact my relationships and community? And then I think it's fun, or fun is a weird word talking about climate change, but it's fascinating to extend that to characters. So like a game me and my friends have started playing is um, is when we watch a, a TV show that we love, you know, that's set in this era, we, we kind of psychoanalyze how the character would be responding to climate change. Mm -hmm. And that's a really fun way to start thinking about it. It's like, oh, what is this character, you know, how... How is Ted Lasso responding to climate or in you know Tony Soprano? And then you can more easily get inside of characters and your stories to ask those same questions. And I'm gonna hand it back to Carmiel for our last prompt. Yeah. So now we will extend ourselves into a fictional character for this last prompt. Um, so as we know, the future is going to require courage from all of us constant acts of courage, big and small. And we're gonna need stories that help us embody and empathize with courageous characters that show us it's possible for us to act courageously too. So for this last prompt, we'd like you to imagine a journalist character. Their boss has just told them, yet again, not to mention climate change when reporting on climate events. This happens all the time because it's apparently bad for ratings. So this reporter is about to go on the air and they have made the decision to go against their boss's wish. They're going to talk about the climate crisis as the cause of the hurricane that they're reporting on. So for the next four minutes, I'd love you to write about the moment just before the cameras turn on. What is going through this character's head? They're about to do something they believe in deeply and that might cost them their job. Are they thinking about their family and if they're gonna be proud of them or disappointed? Are they thinking about how they're gonna pay rent? Are they thinking about what they're gonna eat for lunch? Anything. Uh, so try to embody this moment of courage and all the thoughts and doubts that might come up with it. So we'll write for just four more minutes. 
So thank you all for joining us. I hope that was fruitful. And um, and we just also want to say yes, uh, Quentin, uh, for making climate change fun and sexy. Please, please do that. And we need all of the stories. We need fun and sexy. We need drama. We need rom-coms. It can fit in all of it. Um, we just need to bring it into our stories. So thank you all so much. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been a climate activist for 15 years and I truly believe that telling more stories, uh, telling better stories, more captivating stories, my di more diverse stories across lots of different genres is 100% critical um, to, to moving forward on climate. So I'm really grateful for you for joining us. And if you want to find out more about the Climate Storytelling Playbook and Good Energy, um, you can check out our web website, um, that goodenergystories.com. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll be releasing it in February, 2022. It's gonna be amazing. Hopefully we'll inspire countless amazing stories, um, but thanks again for having us and I hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you so much, Anna Jane and Carmiel, and thank you everyone for participating in this exercise. Um, I found that incredibly moving and um, really insightful. So thank you and please do follow um, Good Energy Pro Good Energy Project and their upcoming climate storytelling playbook, which I'm sure will be filled with many gems like what we just experienced. So thank you for that. I want to intro our next segment. Um, we were able to speak with many different uh, content creators and filmmakers who are utilizing impact in so many creative ways um, from small form projects to large form projects. And so we're going to feature next a segment of different storytellers utilizing both storytelling and impact in their uh, stories and, and their content. So please check that out now. Thank you.